In this episode of the podcast, we answer the question, what exactly is casting looking for in people who apply for reality TV? Welcome to the How To Get On Reality TV podcast with Dan Geesling, where I answer your reality TV casting questions once a week. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Dan Geesling. Welcome to another episode of the How To Get On Reality TV podcast. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys for all the support in the show thus far. Uh, last week, I was not able to put up a podcast, um, but I appreciate all the people that, that tweeted me and reached out and said, Hey Dan, where's the podcast? Um, but anyways... Uh, as we move forward with the show, be sure to always submit some great questions at howtogetonrealitytv.net slash ask. Um, you know, based, this show moves based on the type of questions we get uh, first and foremost. So make sure there's a – we definitely have a backlog, but I'm looking for some more – engaging personal type questions that are more applicable directly to you. So it may be another case study. You know, we did a, a video case study, I believe an episode or two ago. That was really cool and interesting. And uh, so don't, don't hesitate to share your audition video or your casting story so I can help you directly because by helping people with their detailed stories, it also often for someone who may not be that person, it often helps them in a different way that they may not even foresee. Uh, but that being said, uh, if you guys have not had a chance to add me on Snapchat, you can add me at Dan Geesling, all one word, no space. And uh, like I said, the Snapchat episode is coming when I don't know, but uh, you'll find out first on Snapchat. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this week's question from Brandon. Hey, Dan, just want to thank you so much for all the work you put out. As someone who's been trying to get on Big Brother for years, I really appreciate it. Uh, my question today is, what do you think casting values more? Someone who's going to be entertaining or someone who they know will have a good chance at winning? Do they even look for that smart, strategic person that they know will win? Or do they just look for those loud, outgoing type personalities who will make for good entertainment? Thank you very much. All right, Brandon, first and foremost, thank you so much for submitting your question through the website. And you bring up an interesting question that has a very, very simple answer. And, and more often than not, this people have a misconception on this and let it affect how they create their audition video or how they go into open casting call. So your question is, what does casting value more? Someone who they think is going to win the game or someone that's entertaining? The thing that's important that you guys need to realize is that casting whether it's the executive producers who ultimately make the decision not the casting director who make the final decision they don't care if you're going to win or not that's not their job their job is to create an entertaining reality television show so you could be the smartest person in the entire world and have every you know angle right angle everything figured out but that doesn't matter it's can you be entertaining while you're doing that so if you had to you know, pick someone to be on the show. Would you pick someone who you know is going to win or you could pick someone that knows going to entertain a lot of people? Every single time, the person who can entertain people is always going to be picked. So it's your job as a non-trained actor, uh, as a real person, not that actors aren't real person, is to entertain. And that's really, really important. And part of what we try to do here on the on the podcast is help draw out from someone like yourself the most entertaining parts of your life. And really that comes down to two things. One, being self-aware of what is entertaining and what stands out about yourself. And then two, being able to convey that in an entertaining fashion. Um, you know, and one of the other things you mentioned in the question, you said, hey, you know, someone like the loud outgoing type always gets picked. Loud and outgoing isn't always entertaining because you can only have so many loud and outgoing people in a cast, right? You have to have different types of personality. There's different types of personalities that are entertaining. You know, just look at different comedians, for example. You have comedians, you know, that are extremely vulgar and, you know, and comedians that never swear. You have comedians that are over the top and some that are very subtle. You have comedians that are sarcastic and comedians that are slapstick. So there's all so many different ways to be entertaining. And for you, it just comes down to which way or which method of entertaining are you the best at, you know, are you someone that's very subtle, uh, but yet still engaging, you know, it's bottom line is what you can do as a great exercise is look at the cast of your favorite show. If it's a show that just came out, look at that cast. And if you look at each person after one show or two shows, you have an opinion on that's an entertaining person, whether or not you like that person or not doesn't matter. But do you have an opinion on that person? Because in every cast, there's people you're like, who is that person? I don't really remember them. And there's other people on cast like, yeah, I hated that guy. Or I really like that guy. 
And it doesn't matter whether you like them or hate them. It's just that you remember them. And that's your job going through the casting process is you need to be memorable and you're memorable through being entertaining. You're, you can be entertaining through telling stories. You can tell stories based on what's interesting in your life and you can know what's interesting in your life based on having some self-awareness and going through some different exercises to help identify what you're best at, what's most unique about you. So that's really where things go, you know? So you said you've been trying to get on the show for a couple of years. You know, I would take a look at that. I would start at square one and say, okay, what is entertaining about my life or things that I have done? And if you can't answer that question, there's a lot of different things you can do. You guys, hear me give you guys a lot of tactics and, and actions throughout, you know, I think this is podcast episode 80X. I don't know, it's 86, 87. Um, but there's a lot of things. One, you know, I would say make the weird list. Make it a list of the 10 most weird things about yourself that you're embarrassed about that you may your friends may not know about you your family may know about you start there and if if you can't come up with 10 things then you need to go back one step further and look and say what have i done with my life that's somewhat remarkable or different from the average person and if you can't say anything or if you can't come up with anything then go do some different things. It's not really that difficult. You just have to get outside of your comfort zone. And this is more of a, I hate this to be a pontificating episode, but there's a lot of people out there that, you know, just think they're going to get on by being a normal, quote unquote, normal person. You can get on as a normal person, but you've got to understand how to sell yourself using some extraordinary things or doing some extraordinary things in your life. And once you come up with that, you know, for example, I don't want to get too much into it, but I just finished up a casting video analysis, which is a service through the website. And here was this guy. He had all the tools, like, you know, had a great personality, um, looked the part, fit a really interesting demographic and was engaging on camera. But he just wasn't pitching himself in the right way. And when I watch this video, I'm like, there's a 100% chance this guy can get on reality TV, but he doesn't understand how to pitch himself. So all we had to do is tweak his story from here to here, and it's going to be a slam dunk for him, or it's going to put him in a position to be much more successful. Um, and it's just, you know, some a lot of people are like that. They have the tools, but they don't know which direction to go in. And, and so I feel like, Brandon, you know, I would start there. You know, find out what's unique about yourself. Take those actions that I just gave you. And you'll be in a much better position than you are if you haven't heard anything back. Um, but that being said, Brandon, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out to submit a great question like this. Because I think it opened up a really interesting uh, dialogue. And I think it's going to help a lot of people. And uh, as a small thank you, Brandon, we're going to send you a free digital copy of my story, How a Normal Guy Got Cast on Reality TV. And if you want your question answered on this show, you can go to howtogetonrealitytv.net slash ask and uh, leave it through the voice map. You can do it through your browser, through your phone, through your tablet. Super easy. And uh, the more specific the question, um, the better. And so share your casting stories. Share how you pitch yourself because that's what I think is when this show can help the most people, is when you break down people's stories and uh, you know you can learn from them in a different way. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. All right, so as we wrap up another episode of How To Get On Reality TV Podcast, I want to give you guys a heads up to follow me on Snapchat at Dan Giesling. It's all one word, no space, D-A-N-G-H-E-S-L-I-N-G. I'm going to be doing a Snapchat episode soon. Um, and if you want your question directly answered in a quick rapid fire type setting, We're going to set it up for that um, in the near future, in the very near future. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next Monday.